Hi everybody. Hope you are still doing well. And if you're watching this right in order the other one, not much has changed. It's about five minutes later. But we're going to continue on with a dive into Rails. So this is going to be kind of a working through some of these topics type of lecture. So if you are following along, I would create a brand new Rails application because I'm going to be mucking around with it and intentionally not doing things correctly <laughs> just to show you each piece. Um, your homework that you're going to be doing this week is basically the entire getting started guide and following along with that. And I'll have some guidelines for you in the homework, but I'm going to look at it very piecemeal and you can do this a lot easier <laughs> if you do it correctly. But just thought I'd put that little caveat out there. So where we ended up last time, we were talking about the folder structure, MVC, all that fun stuff. Now we're going to have to understand how Rails handles URL calls. So if you remember from our HTTP content, there are different methods, right? So there's get and put, there's post, there's delete. And basically, these are the common HTTP parameters, right? Rails maps these operators, these commands, to a CRUD paradigm. So this is create, read, update, destroy. This is pretty common in, in web terminology and various apps, uh, mainly database driven usually. So create's going to be that I create some new, like a new row in my database. Read would be to pull something out of it. Update would be to update it. And then destroy is going to be deleting something. And we can do this with Rails pretty simply, honestly. But why are we talking about this and why does you know it apply to you? Well, if I want to get some content, I want to just read an article. For instance, I want to read a page. If I'm updating something, then I might be calling article slash one slash edit. We'll see how this kind of works out together. But basically, the idea is that our router is mapping these methods to these methods. All right. So now what we're going to do is play around with the controllers a little bit. So if you remember, controllers are just Ruby classes. Uh, they're going to inherit from a base class, which you'll see when you create one. But basically, uh, again, we're kind of doing this piece by piece as we go. So if you're getting a little bit sidetracked or confused, um, go through that getting started guide as part of the homework. It'll all kind of hopefully click. But what we've got going on here at the bottom are a couple of commands for generating and destroying controllers. Now, if we were to go ahead and clear this out, let's clear this over a bit, bin slash rails generate controller. So this is telling Rails that we're creating something. What's that something? A controller. You can also generate view, generate model, that kind of fun stuff. Generate controller tester. Tester. Okay. So it creates the Ruby files that we need. So it's creating the controller. It's creating a default view. It's going to give us some helper scripts and unit tests and things like that. Now, if we look inside our app controllers tester controller, uh, one thing to note makes it all lowercase. So it's going to take tester, make it lowercase. If it was plural, it would try to turn it into singular as well, I believe. It might be views, but I'll have to double check that. Inside of our class, we have a class definition for tester controller, and it's inheriting from application controller, which is our base. So if you have common functions, if you have common parameters or variables that you want to use, uh, you could define that up there. <clears throat> We're also going to get a default view in terms of tester, or it's going to at least create the folder for us. We need to define what those pages are going to look like, but that would be a topic for a few slides from now. Okay, next, we want to get rid of it. So by default, when we create a controller, it creates several additional files. And if you've ever installed a program on your computer and it did not come with an uninstall script, you probably are well aware of how annoying it can be to clean things up. So Rails is going to help us with that. So if I do bin slash Rails, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> bin slash Rails destroy controller tester. OK, it's going to remove everything. It's also going to update our routes if we have defined any. And it's gone forever. So let's go ahead 
and we're going to create a new controller. So we created our uh, application here, and now we have to talk a touch about routing. So I'm not intentionally hop hopping topics here, but in order for a controller to do anything, we need to first define a route for it. Now, depending on how you want to do things, you can do the route first, you can do the controller first. We're going to um, start with the route. We're going to skip the controller. I'm going to show you some errors. We'll define the controller. Life will be good. But again, routing is basically just figuring out where to go in the application. So user puts in a URL into the address bar, hits enter, and ideally we get our site. This could also be internally defined by the application too, if we want to route the user from view to view to view, for instance. But routing is going to handle that for us. So to kind of break this down to touch here, let's say we have a website, the creatively named your website.com. And the first thing that we put into it is API. Now, this kind of implies that there is a controller called API. There doesn't need to be. You could name it whatever you want and just route it to that variable name. Um, that's probably honestly a good security practice anyway. But for the sake of discussion, let's say we recreate a controller called API. All right. So the route is going to dispatch a call to the API controller. We see also there is a five here. Now, this is a variable that we define in our route to pull into our controller. Ideally, we should define it. If we don't, it's just going to be ignored and this route will not exist. But let's say that we did define it and we could call this, say, ID. We also see here at the end, there's this call to edit. So this is part of that CRUD application where it's the update aspect. Now we have edit, we have show. There's a handful of verbs which are kind of reserved or default in Ruby, sorry, in Rails. We can edit these as well and we can update them, but basically there are some common ones which we'll see momentarily. But the way this is going to be broken down, just kind of to clear, uh, clear this up a little bit, where are we starting? Okay, do we have any extra variables or IDs or parameters of some kind? And do we have some kind of action? This is one of the common paths that you will see. And it can get as complicated or as simple as you define it to be. But just kind of breaking down what the router is looking at here. Now, when we define routes, this is going to be defined in something called a domain specific language or a DSL. And all that means is that this language that we see here is specific to Rails. Now, if I put this syntax into some other language, it's going to have no idea what I'm talking about, right? Rails is going to parse this out and understand what it means. And that also means that you have to understand the syntax of these calls. So in this config slash routes.rb file, this is where we config our routing, we're going to have an empty file, which basically has this first line, has this last line, and we'll see it has a few comments in between to help get you started. But these are the types of lines that we're going to be adding in here. All right, and let's kind of break this one down a little bit before we do our implementation. This is from, I think, the routes guide. Or no, sorry, the getting started guide. This line is going to say, get articles. All right, so basically what we are looking for here is in our URL, if we have our domain or our IP address, and then the root is going to be slash, and then there should be articles following that. All right, and what this means is that anytime this matches, do this. We can make this as complicated we can do kind of catch-all type of um, calls, for lack of a better word. Um, we can add in variables and parameters and things of that nature. And this can all go in here. And based on every single match, we're going to say, use this controller, call this method, render this view, that kind of thing. This particular one here is very specific as well. The only time this will ever get called is if we have IP address or domain name slash articles. After anything after that, it will not work, all right? And what it's going to do is when we get a call for articles, we're going to dispatch it to the articles controller pound index. And this is just basically saying call the index method of this controller. If we had show or edit or destroy, that would go in here, you know, if we were making that particular call. 
All we're doing is taking our HTTP get and mapping it to our articles controller. So that's all this is really doing here. Now, let's say that we want to add a new route. And again, I'm intentionally doing this before I create a controller just to show you the errors. Um, again, more detailed guide here. Highly recommend reading through it. But let's say that I want to pass in an IP address to my server. And I'm going to call this courses, not classes, just to avoid uh, naming errors that you'll see later on. Everything's going to be course, not classes. Um, I just didn't update my slides for that. But I'm going to add in this route. So I want to get classes, and I also want to get classes slash six of courses, courses slash 658. So if I were to pass this in, I would get an HTTP request slash courses slash 658. Now, if I were to, say, update my routing, I would add a call that could look something like this. All right, so this is similar to the last one we saw over here. Get classes colon course ID. So what this is doing here is I'm creating a variable called course ID, and that's going to be passed around to my controller. So I can get this parameter name, course ID, later on. A lot easier than parsing out the second piece of the URL. All right. This is going to be mapped to courses dot, uh, dot courses pound show. So anytime this route comes in, call the show method of my controller. And if I were to go a little bit further here, sorry about that, I could say just get slash classes to classes index. So if I left off the ID here, it would just go to a singular homepage view kind of a thing. All right, so let's uh, do a little demo here. So I'm going to start my application. I'm going to start my application. <laughs> Clear. Let's, let's do bin. I just did the OS to kind of push it down a little bit. Rails server dash B 0 0 0 0 dash P 80 80. Okay, it's actually running. That's good. And I closed the IP address for some reason. Well, console. I don't even remember what the IP address is. Let's pull this up very quickly. How are you all doing today? 61. All righty. 61. And that's going to be colon 8080. So here's our Rails page. It is beautiful. OK. Now what we want to do, now that that's running, is let's update our route. Now I'm going to deviate slightly because I want to show you the more catch-all term. So if I do vim config slash routes.rb, I see our kind of commenting get started. This would be if we just have a root default catch-all view. Um, I'm going to add in resources courses. So what this is going to do is that any time courses is found as the kind of root slug of the URL, it's going to handle it, right? And it's going to pass it off to the courses controller. So it's kind of shorthand in a way. So save that. I'm going to now refresh my page. Should look the same, except when I add on courses, I'm going to get a big fat error which is good. This was intended. When I recorded this about 20 minutes ago, I started getting bizarre errors, which I wasn't expecting. Now we see you know, a whole lot of information here about what it may have been trying to do. And it's actually showing us our routes. By defining this line in this fashion, I get all of these routes by default. Whereas if I had defined it this way, I would get a very specific route and I want to have a more catch-all route. So resources and then the first bit of it is going to give us the default verbs. So we'll see this in a second here. Now actually you know let's just for fun let me uh let me comment this out because I'll show you what I was talking about before. Um, I want to add in this particular view here or this route here. So let's add Come on. I want to add in get slash courses slash course ID to courses 
courses found show. I also want to add in courses to courses index, right? So I've got this, and oh, look at that routing error here on the side. So this would pop up in my logs. I refresh, and I go to my actual page here, which is now off screen. And I refresh, and I get a slightly different error. But basically, you know, the idea is kind of the same. We have a little bit less in terms of available routes. And this is going to look the same to you if you're not really digging into this list here. But I have a lot less, many fewer options for routing. All right, and we can actually kind of extrapolate a touch. This is kind of a nice little aside that I wasn't planning on going into right this second, but let's do that anyway. Um, we can look at the available routes on our server. So let me, can you know, let's uh, let's split this horizontally, and it's going to be bin slash rails routes, bin slash rails routes. And we're going to get a lot of stuff in here, but I'm going to scroll up to the top. Hopefully this is actually visible to you. I see the available routes the server has. All right, kind of scooting it over a bit. I see get courses course ID, get courses and some, you know, other information here. But basically, this route is allowed, this route is allowed. And if we go down, we see some more kind of internal rails things going on here. But let's contrast this. Now I'm going to comment these out. And I'm going to uncomment this resources courses where this is more of a catch all term. All right. And I'm going to Go back to this pane, and let's look at it again. You know, what? let's let's be smarter about this. But we're using Linux. Let's use Linux to its full potential. Type this over to head. So let's look at the top lines, and it's of course not going to be enough. <laughs> so that's that's fine. We're not going to be smart about it because we get a better uh, smaller view anyway. But Look at this. We have courses index, courses create, courses new, courses edit, courses show, update, destroy. All of those CRUD operations that I kind of talked about before are now by the default available. And that's simply defined by calling it this way in our route. This is implying that there is a controller called courses with all of these methods to handle it. All right, we haven't implemented that yet, but we will momentarily. Basically, if you get anything out of this, this is very restrictive, which is fine if that's what you want. This is a little bit more open, which again, depends on what you want here. So let's clear this, exit out of that pane, close off our route, and get back to our demo here. So again, now we have this other error. And what I think I'm going to do, let's see how much, yeah, so I'm going to split this up in one more minute. Let's actually get this working, and then we'll go into views and models in the next video. So before we do that, though, I mentioned verbs and actions, and I forgot I was going to talk about that. When you define something with resources in our routes, we're going to get our default HTTP verbs. And all this means is that we have some default operations that we're implying will exist. So we have get. We have post, we have puts, we have delete. We map those to our internal CRUD operations. Um, I might have a get for a particular path, depending on what we define, but this is returning information. Our controller needs to have a index view or a new, um, sorry, operation, new operation. Create, show, edit, update, destroy. These are going to exist by default and we're gonna have to handle them. This is the default list. You can extend that if you want with more. You just have to basically update Rails' internal um, configuration to handle what that mapping is going to be. It's possible, you know, nothing stopping you from saying, oh, I don't know, let's go to this slash courses slash create a new course. You know, this could be my verb that I create. I'm just going to have to tell Rails what this means because it's not going to know by default. But recommend checking this out because it's uh, you know good to know. All of this is good to know. All right, let's get this actually working now. So I'm going to add in a controller. So I'm going to call generate controller courses. 
I'm going to give it a default index and I'm going to tell it to skip routes because we've already defined that. All right, so let's say bin slash rails generates controller courses index skip routes. All right, so this is the line that's in the slides. It's going to create a controller. It's also creating a default index view for me, which is kind of nice. Um, and our other helpers and tests as well. If we look at our controllers, and this is going to be called courses, it actually gives us a little bit more than the other command did before for creating a controller, by the way. So it gives us this default index route. All right. So we now have this. And if I, you know, if you had this in your initial demo, make sure you use this resources colon again, courses. You know, I might update this to be courses in the uh, slides that I put up as well. All right, so we can do a little bit more here too. So when we hit index, let's do puts hello from the index. So again, puts is our printout from, you know, Ruby basically. Anytime a user hits the index page, we're going to get a log entry saying hello from the index. All right, so we have that. And now one other thing we can do is let's update our default view as well. So app view um, courses, and then this is going to be index.html. Again, the .erb is saying this is a Ruby template. So we see a header tag, find me in app views, da 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 da. Okay, we can add in, you know, a little bit more div, hello there, CIS658 friends. Good enough, good enough for editing purposes. So this is what the view should be when we run do courses. All right, so here we have our Rails page, home page still works, slash courses, now should route to this thing. And we even see our little update as well. Okay, just to kind of summarize, because I've been hopping between content and slides and, and implementation all that, we created a route for the courses page. We made that able to handle multiple verbs by default. That is now routing to the courses controller, which will dispatch only the HTML, or sorry, only the index page, which routes to the index.html.erb file. Okay. What about that thing that you talked about where, hey, I want to make this slash 658. It doesn't exist. We'll get to that in the next video. Bye, everybody.